Hello everybody and welcome to Zero Phobia. I feel pretty well established in doing this, thanks in total to my massive hubris. But tonight we're not talking the complete lack of scares. Some of these games hold their fair share of fear and fright, but then they just kind of fizzle out into nothingness. Tonight we're going to focus on the top 10 worst horror games that I've played. This list will possibly make you hate me, and that's fine. If you're in the business of hating someone over voicing their own opinions on the internet, well that's entirely your call. Such is how the internet operates, and changing that establishment would be anarchy, pure chaos, destruction. But enough of that. Let's go ahead and step into the void with... Let's go ahead and start you guys off relatively easy. But before we begin with this, let's talk Resident Evil history, shall we? The first Resident Evil was an amazing game, and it is very well considered the first commercially successful survival horror game to date, and a major influence on my personal favorite series of games, the Silent Hill games. But just like the Silent Hill games, the Resident Evil games have their fair share of terrible entries. Foreshadowing. Resident Evil 4, much like Silent Hill 4, was possibly the last great game in the series. If you're unfamiliar, which I don't understand how you could be, Resident Evil 4 puts you in the boots of Leon S. Kennedy, sent to rescue the president's daughter from a cult, located in a remote rural village in Europe. It has the Chainsaw Man, the Bella Sisters, the Iron Maiden monster, just gory glory in every twist and turn of this game. Now you may be asking me, Zero, why aren't you talking about Resident Evil 6? Resident Evil 6 was terrible. What about 6? 6? 6? Whoops, but yes, you're right, 6 was very gross. But for me, Resident Evil 5 started this debacle. First off, I hate Chris Redfield. He himself, in all of his muscular, go-gunning Arnold Schwarzenegger glory, takes the horror completely out of the game for me. How am I literally supposed to be scared of anything if I'm this guy? And yes, I hear you, but Zero, that's a horrible reason to hate a game. And yes, but first stopped interrupting me, it's quite rude. Secondly, yes, I do agree, that is a terrible reason to solely hate a game, but bear with me. This was the game that took the series from survival horror and put it into the action game genre with weird monsters. In 4, I stayed vigilant, constantly scared of running out of supplies while fighting off hordes and hordes of Las Plagas with merely a pistol for the bulk of the game. 5, in my opinion, had just too much ammo, too much health. I just didn't have that overwhelming fear that I may at some point be cornered with no way to defend myself. I didn't feel alone, I didn't feel surrounded. I felt like Terminator 2 and Dawn of the Dead featuring Jill Valentine's cleavage. The game was solely a copy and paste job of Resident Evil 4, overhauled with action mechanics, clunky controls, and really, really bad cooperative AI. The game was just bad, and then 6 happened, but don't fret, 7 was just teased, and then just play the Resident Evil HD remake. For this, I could have went with Homecoming, or I could have went with Downpour, or I could have even went with Origins, which wasn't one of my favorites. But the difference between those three and this one is those three at least tried to be a good Silent Hill game. To do this entry, let's take a look at what makes the Silent Hill games amazing, and then use that knowledge to dissect this turd. For starters, let's look at the characters of the first four Silent Hill games. First you have Harry Mason, star of the first game, who loses his daughter in an unfortunate accident in a foggy, creepy town. The daughter being Cheryl Mason, who is the good part of Alessa Gillespie's soul, who is abducted by Alessa Gillespie's evil part of her soul in order to fuse and make her powerful. Alessa Gillespie, a very powerful medium in her youth, sacrificed by her crazy cult mother to bring about the birth of the Order's God, who is also the most prominent figure in the Silent Hill series who is the driving haunting behind the town and makes the town bat 
crazy. Heather Mason, the reincarnated form of Cheryl and Alyssa Mason, born out of an incubator when Harry fights the machine to birth the new god. Harold is, of course, Cheryl and Alessa and has both of those powers and is then stalked by the Order to again bring about the birth of their crazy evil new god. James Sunderland, who receives a letter from his dead wife to head back to Silent Hill in order to face his demons. And then the star of Silent Hill 4, Henry Townsend, who is trapped in a haunted apartment. The apartment is haunted by a crazy serial killer who thinks the apartment is his mother and must kill 21 people to fulfill the 21 sacraments to purify his mother. Harry must kill all the ghosts and exercise the apartment by killing the ghost of the serial killer. Silent Hill is rich in lore. The characters are very well fleshed out. Now let's look at Silent Hill Book of Memories. You have Bookworm, Jock, Goth, Preppy, and Rocker. And that's it. Moving on. Silent Hill in and of itself is a very creepy town with ambient music, creepy monsters that manifest themselves as demons of your past, repressed memories, things that you have to deal with that you decide not to deal with until you're in Silent Hill. Pyramid Head who rapes other monsters, fog, spooky, just everything, a haunted apartment in which the only way to get out of the apartment is through a hole that mysteriously appears in the bathroom that takes you to creepy forest, water prisons, crazy apartment places, just again bat crazy, insanity, ambient, psychological, mind fuckery. and then you have Silent Hill Book of Memories, which is basically a Diablo clone. There are better sh Diablo clones out there. Do not play this one. It's a top-down hack and slash, basically taking the best elements of the other games and bastardizing them for Konami's greedy money purposes. It is not a Silent Hill game. It is a hack and slash piece of sh It's basically just a cash grab to capitalize on a once amazing name in a once amazing series. And again, at least Homecoming, Downpour, and Origins tried. And you would think, they learned, right? I mean, just like the previous entry, I can sit here and say we have a new Silent Hill coming, one that's going to be really good, one to look forward to, one that's going to take the basic core of the game, expand upon it, and be a new horror game to revolutionize the genre, right? I can say that. <sighs> nope. What exactly is a nightmare? so hard. Ace. This particular game wasn't terrible. It wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. As far as an alien game, in my opinion, it's one of the best ones that I've played. It fully encompasses the atmosphere of the first alien movie. The spaceship is creepy, the corridors are creepy, the alien is terrifying. Even the build up to the first encounter with the xenomorph was really well executed. But really, at core, the game is just repetitive and very, very long. To this day, I haven't finished the game. I'm about halfway through it before I decided to give up. The game is just too repetitive. Once the initial fear of the alien wears off, and you've seen one of the same four death animations for the 100th time, it's basically just a slow trek through an isolated space station running from androids and other humans. Which is a shame because the game had such high promise. And sure, after putting it down for a few months and picking it back up, the game is refreshed and scary again, but that wears off too quickly. And I want a game that's going to keep me engaged for hours. Seven. Yes, the best horror game of 2015 was just not. Yes, zombies are scary. Fighting the reanimated corpses of the dead through a virus or through some crazy necromancer magic is terrifying but zombies are one of the most overused aspects in gaming history ever. It's really hard to call a zombie game a horror game at this point, it's more of a run and shoot game because you want to blow off some steam because you're mad at your mom. If Call of Duty does it, it's not a horror game. The parkour elements in Dying Light were cool, I can admit that. The crafting was pretty fun, but the game in and of itself was just boring. Once the fun of the parkour and the crafting wears off, you're basically just playing a game about a bunch of boring people killing boring zombies. The entire game was just a hype train all the way to meh. It just wasn't good. And that's basically all I can say about this game. Developers need to stop throwing zombies into a game and then calling it horror because at this point you're just insulting our intelligence. Six. 
Speaking of overused elements in games, this is another one that fell very, very short of my expectations. Tons of people on the internet called it the most horrifying game they've ever played, yada blah, yada blah, and look, I watched Marble Hornets, that was a really, really cool mini-movie on YouTube, it was interesting, but at its core, Slenderman has just never scared me. At very best, he always looked like a really cool comic book villain. This game for me was so far from horror. You're stuck in a dark forest and forced to collect eight pages with scribbles on them while being chased by a tall, faceless entity. Yes, the piano chords are supposed to strike fear to my hearts, and yes, when he comes up on me, the static happens and I'm supposed to act like, oh, what just happened? Slenderman just got me. You can't finish the game because once you collect the pages, he comes and gets you anyway. But really, that's not scary. It doesn't terrify me. It doesn't keep me up at night. It's really just at its core, nothing. And I can really understand how being in a dark forest would be spooky, but like I said, the scares in this game just don't hit. They don't have that impact that they need. Now I can understand at the time it was released, the 8 pages was a very terrifying game because it was one of the first of its kind to feature the first internet phenomenon known as Slenderman. And the 8 pages in itself isn't a terrible game, it's the subsequent copycats after it. Every indie game page I go to has another Slenderman game. Stop making Slenderman games. It's done. Nobody cares. If I wanted to tromp through a forest collecting paper, I would give my daughter a coloring book and tell her to go crazy. Five. Now I have to admit that I was very excited for this game when it was first announced. Being trapped underwater? Scary. Killer robots? Scary. Being trapped underwater, chased by killer robots, terrifying. Soma, slow and boring. This type of game is what I would like to call a hide and seek simulator. Amnesia was what I would assume the first of its kind, and Amnesia was scary because it was new and innovative. Outlast was scary because it was visceral and disturbing and gory and just off putting the entire game. Soma was basically just hiding from robots. And while I can admit the story was pretty interesting, scanning human consciousness into robots, there was no real scare factor. At least Alien had something terrifying that you're running from. The robots in and of itself weren't that scary. It was just hiding and moving and waiting to move and waiting to hide and hiding to move and moving to wait and it just took so long for me to see the end of the game I was just so uninterested because I wasn't scared of what I was hiding from. And I completely understand the concept of being defenseless, and alone, and confused, and all of that. I can understand how that could be a little unnerving and scary. But again, this game just fell flat, and after about 30 minutes of me playing it, it just got stale and repetitive and overused. This game just needed more oomph to it. It needed a kick. Something to make the game a little bit more interesting than just hiding from robots. Jump scares are simply not scary, but we'll hit on that more in a moment. This game had all the atmosphere, all the build up, everything like that, but the initial payoff after all of that was just so lacking. You don't meet a crazy clown, you don't meet a scary monster, the ghost isn't frightening, it's a little girl that pops up in your face and screams, and then you get a game over. That's not scary, that's very annoying. And I get it, you have creepy forests, howling winds, Creepy statues, creepy buildings, disembodied footsteps, giggling, rustling through the leaves, you're walking dark and alone and scared, but the payoff at the end was just nothing. It was much like Wounded where the entire game I was tense, and then when I finally saw what I was being scared of, completely ruined the game for me. And I completely understand how a jump scare can be scary. They do work when used effectively. I liken it to salt. A little bit of salt goes a long way, but if you're just sitting there eating handfuls of salt, you turn into a dried up husk with a sodium problem. What I'm trying to say is you can't just build a game off of jump scares and expect it to be scary. It won't. It'll be fun for 30 seconds and then end up a stale novelty. Three. This is another game that I was really excited for. You have a randomly generated map with randomly generated puzzles and randomly generated scares, but the scares look like this. And don't get me wrong, the atmosphere for the game was great, they just never capitalized on it. And furthermore, the randomly generated maps I mentioned before actually became the game's downfall. It is so easy to get lost in this game, which admittedly could be horrifying. Just imagine that you've lost your cell phone in your house. You need to find your cell phone. 
So you're looking for your cell phone, and while you're looking for your cell phone, you're being chased by a very annoying ghost. And while you're looking for your cell phone being chased by this annoying ghost, your house keeps changing. That's terrifying for the first 10 minutes, but then it becomes a very annoying chore and super annoying. That's daylight. This game had so much potential. It looked great, it sounded great, and yeah, it was a PT clone, which is another overused thing in horror games, but the story was interesting enough to keep me engaged. And unlike most games on this list, it actually managed to scare me and keep me on my toes. I ain't scared. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like that I can't see. I'm gonna see. No! 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 But then I saw this. The game wasn't finished, and that completely destroyed any momentum that this game had. Should I have done more research? Probably. And I know at this point they finished the game, and I'll probably get around to finishing the game myself eventually. But really? It's not finished? And you're selling it to people? This isn't specifically about horror at this point. This is about gaming in general. You're selling an unfinished product to people for real money. Now imagine you go to a movie that's been hyped all to hell and back. You want to see this movie. So you buy your tickets, you sit down with your popcorn and your drink, and when the movie starts getting really good, say about halfway through the movie, the movie stops. And you see a screen that says, Thank you for your money. The movie will be finished eventually. We hope to hear your feedback. Have a great day. That just doesn't work. You can't do that. You can't sell an unfinished product. But that's not the real issue with the game. Because The Forest, which is one of my favorite survival horror games, is still an alpha. It's been an alpha for years now, and it's still a great game, and it keeps getting better. That's because you can still play it. The game never finishes. You purchased a game that you can continue to play. This game was a linear-based story game that stopped, and you couldn't play it anymore until they were done. It doesn't stop with a half-hearted thank you and a come back and see me sometime, cowboy. It still goes on. And yeah, it'll wipe your save when a major update goes through, but that's just more incentive to play the game. Layers of Fear was good, it was great, it was a good game, it was very linear, and like I said, uncovering the story was the real meat of the game. And you get more to the story near the end of the game where the game cuts off. It didn't leave me engaged, it didn't leave me wanting more, it left me feeling robbed and bitter. Had the game continued, I probably would have enjoyed it instead of having this bitter taste left in my mouth. So for future developers, when you release a game, make sure you finish it before you release it. Don't sell me a halfway done game and expect me to be happy about it. I'm looking completely at you, Hitman. Why? Now, if you're still here with me at this point, I appreciate it. I'll go ahead and open the exit door for you because unpopular opinion, I cannot stand this game. And not for reasons just like this, or this, or this, sorry Mark, or even this, but let's be real for a second. Yes, animatronics can be scary. Yes, mannequins can be scary. Yes, baby dolls can be terrifying. This can even be scary. Five Nights at Freddy's is not scary. Yes, I understand that the lore is very rich, and yes, I understand that the game can be very challenging, but after the initial jump scare wears off, the game just pff, falls flat. Check camera, open door, turn on light, check camera, Close door, turn off light, conserve battery, open door, check camera, jump scare, game over, start over. That repeats itself for four games. And while I can admit that the third one added some new things to it that were pretty interesting like the gas and the hallucinations and the fourth one had you in a whole new place, the game at core really just feels like it's a night shift security guard simulator with creepy animatronics. For a horror game for children? Yes, I can definitely see how this would work. Maybe not all 11 year olds should experience Silent Hill or the gore that is Resident Evil. Maybe that's why I'm so cynical and jaded. But I'm cynical and jaded, so deal with it. And mind you, I'm not shitting on the developers at all. I'm not going to sit here and preach that Scott Cawthorn is a money hungry developer making crappy games and raking in the money because he can. I've done a little research and he's made a game that he's proud of. He made the game that he wanted to make and that's perfectly fine. My main issue with this game and all the other games on this list, except for Resident Evil 5 and Book of Memories, because you know what you 
did is that they can all be so much better. They all have potential to be great games, but they all fall short. And I'm not going to sit here and preach about how consumers need to be smarter and not just buy table scraps, see layers of fear, because of the hype train. Or just buy and do a game because it's the current trend, Five Nights at Freddy's, because that's not my place. I'm not here to tell you how to spend your money. I am going to say that there are indie horror game developers that are making way better games that deserve this attention, but everybody is just too focused on playing unfinished games and drawing naked pictures of possessed robot bunnies to pay them any attention. And because that's where the money's at, instead of new, innovative horror games made by passionate directors who put tons and tons of work into their games, we get mindless clones of P.T. and Five Nights at Freddy's and Amnesia half-heartedly made to rake in the money. But really, what do I know? I'm sitting here pissing on a $3 game about a haunted Chuck E. Cheese knockoff, and Scott Cawthorn has a movie deal, so who wins that fight? So if you stayed here to the end of this video, I thank you. If you loved any of these games, I'm not here to tell you what to do, I'm just here to look cute and talk about nothing on camera. Do you agree with my list? Let me know down in the comments section. I'm also accepting death threats, hate mail, slander, anything you can throw at me. Just leave that down there. I'll read it when I have time. I'll respond accordingly. If you liked this video, on the off chance that you agree with me, give me a huge thumbs up. Share this video around and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the other side.